how to do a still life using the traditional Renaissance style. We begin by painting the entire picture in brown tones. This is called an underpainting. And we do the entire painting as a value study, understanding the lights and the darks. Next, we're going to put on the color, and we're going to put it on layers of transparent glazes. Now, a glaze means that the paint is transparent. So let's start with our apple. I'm going to take some red and squeeze it out into this container. Then I'm going to add about the same amount of water. So it'll be about 50-50 water. Stirring these together, I will get a glaze. Now there's other ways to get glazes. There's something that's called a medium. A medium you can mix with the paint to make it transparent also. But for the sake of convenience and ease, we're just going to use water for this picture. So I've mixed my red with the water. And I'm going to take that red and I'm going to put an even coat of it over that apple from edge to edge. Almost as if I'm laying a piece of pink plastic over the whole circle of the apple. This is a traditional method. This was used by the Renaissance masters during the 14th and 1500s. And when we use the paint in this way, we keep the full brilliance, the full vividness of the paint. I'm going to take a nice yellow. This is Naples yellow. It's a soft, sunshiny yellow. A little bit of water. I like these reusable containers because you can put a top on them and then you can keep the paint. Acrylic paints will keep for weeks if they're in a tight sealed container. Now I'm going to stir the yellow with the water and then I'm going to put that on top of the whole pair. It's better to put it on too thin than too thick. If we put it on too thick, we'll lose some of our underpainting. We don't want to lose the underpainting. We want to maintain the full underpainting. The color that an object is is called the local color. And we still want to have the light, the medium, the dark, the reflected light, and the highlight. Now we want to have it all in the local color of the object. This is not the final layer. This is another layer in the painting. We will add a few more layers after this. So it, it's still not finished, but we're making progress. We, we want it about the consistency of iced tea. So it's almost like water, but it has a little something to it. And this green I'm going to lay right over the top of the tablecloth. And it's okay if things touch a little bit. It's better to have the colors touch each other, to have a little green touch the red and a little green touch the yellow. That's fine because in real life light bounces around. You never want to leave spaces in between your objects. You want all of the colors to butt right up against each other or even go into each other a tiny bit here and there. Now I want to put the green in the shadows too, but I want just the slightest amount of green. So I'm going to make an even thinner glaze. I'm going to pour some of this just a tiny bit and add even more water. Because these shadows are falling on the tablecloth. So we're going to have some of the green of the tablecloth in the shadows also. So I want to put some of the green glaze, but just the slightest whisper of it. I want to put that right into the shadows. 
And I'm going to have a little bit of the green on this part of the tablecloth also that's hanging down. I believe this is dry. We're going to work some more. As you notice, the white highlights have been covered with the glaze. So I'm going to put those white highlights back on. I'm not going to use any water. I'm just going to use the straight white paint. And I'm going to put the highlights right back on. And now I have layers of highlights. I've got highlights that have glaze and highlights that are just the straight white. So I have many different kinds of highlights, and that's realistic. There's many different shades of light. When the light hits an object, especially a shiny metal object or a shiny piece of fruit, we get all sorts of reflectivity and beautiful lights bouncing around. I'm going to put the highlights right back in here. Nice and thick. I'm not going to be afraid to put the white. I'm just going to put the white, put the white right in there. We don't have to be afraid. The more contrast, the more dynamic and interesting. And we get contrast by using strong lights and strong darks. That's what gives us contrast. And rub some of those white highlights into the green tablecloth. This time I am adding a little bit of water to my paint. I don't want to make it too white. I just want it to look like the light is bouncing on the surface of the tablecloth. I'm going to work on the stems of the fruit. To do that, I'm going to get a tiny brush. So when we get to the finishing parts of a painting, we want to get our little brushes out and work on the tiny details. So now we're getting into the final phase of the picture. First we did the background, then we did the objects. We finished the whole painting as a brown underpainting. A value study. We put the colors on with layers of transparent glazes. We reapplied all the highlights with the thick opaque white. And now I'm going to get into doing some very delicate detail work. With a little tiny brush, I'm going to go into those highlights that I had put on the stem. And the highlight on this stem. Get some nice delicate highlights. And sometimes pears have a little bit of a spotting dappling. So sometimes on the pears I'll do some spots. A little bit more highlight on my pear. Here we have our final painting. I've taken some time to observe the still life and I believed that this is a finished piece. This is the style that the Renaissance masters used for still lives, for portraits, and for landscapes. And I hope that you've enjoyed learning this style and I hope that it will be very useful for you with your personal progress in your artistic development. Thank you.